What might it look like to take a theological approach to the traditional view? I want to offer a version of traditionalism today to you that's called reconciliationism. So it is truly a version of the you know, eternal, everlasting, conscious torment view. But it has quite a lot of theological nuance that I think really matters and can be really helpful. So let me quickly summarize it. Reconciliationism is the view that all sinning ceases in the eternal state. The idea is that in some sense, the reprobate participate in this cosmic reconciliation of all things to God. They are reconciled, not salvifically though, but in and through punishment. Uh, they're defeated rebels, no longer able to continue in rebellion. You, you might call this the Christus Victor view of hell, the divine conquest view of hell, where hell is understood through the prism, first and foremost, but not exclusively, of the victory of Christ eschatologically. I'm going to unpack that a whole lot more as we go, but there's a quick thumbnail sketch. Uh, I want to suggest to you, though, that this is more than just a view. In some ways, I see this as an attempt to theologically reframe the whole conversation we're having about hell. And the ideas and concepts that are, trish, are typically dealt with here, I want to give them a, a, a whole change of frame. Uh, there's verses that seem to speak of the universal intentions of God with the world. Can we get those without universalism as a view. I mean, I, I want to admit here, the universalists really have a point. There's not only several passages, but a thread in scripture that paints God's reconciliation in the end without limits, without exception. Uh, the scripture seems to teach that there's this cosmic and universal reconciliation of all things, consummation of all things in the eschaton. Does that comport with the traditional view? Well, uh, I want to just look at three representative passages here, and I'll, I'll do this quickly for the sake of time. Uh, first is 1 Corinthians 15, 28. I think I have it on the next slide. There it is. When he, that is Christ, has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him, that is the Father, who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. Now, the idea here is that God being all in all is that his rule is unmediated, direct, unchallenged. There are no exceptions here. There are no continuing rebels. It's this restored order, all things are reconciled. There's no longer this rift between God and the cosmos because of sin and death. Sin and death are destroyed. Everything is made right with God again. But it's not obvious that that requires universal salvation. Because this verse speaks of defeat, death, and destruction, subjugation of the immediate context, it's talking about those things, might allow us to see hell underneath that umbrella. And my view fits really quite nicely with this. In this restored order where God is all in all, the reprobate participate in this reality by way of defeat and punishment. See, there are some traditionalist views out there that see hell as involving continuing existence, but existence that's outside of the scope of God's reconciliation with the cosmos. But I don't think that a passage will allow us to say that sort of thing, this passage. The reprobate cannot continue in rebellion and sin. 